Oh, happy day! It's Oberon Solo's Dota Underlords. That's right, Auto Chess is back. It's that time of year, and I'ma be selecting dudes from shopping lists. Oh yeah, shopping lists. I'm thinking I might go scrappy if I'm offered it. I don't know. I'm getting tired of this uh, elusive and crit meta. And, and I really, really hate uh, freaking Warlock and Ogre. It's so annoying. This, uh, there it is, Bloodbound. That, that shit is Garbo. Uh, there we go. He's scrappy. He's young, scrappy, and hungry. As you can tell, the upload schedule is being impacted a bit due to Summer Theater. This time it's my turn on the mic over a nice game of Dota Underlords. Being involved in theater always gets my juices flowing, so today I've made some observations about storytelling. Yeah, I'm the best! Look at my hearts. Oh, well, you can only see the shadows in my hearts, but whatever. Don't worry, hang on. I'll, I'll link it to D&D eventually. Amidst all the special effects, the buzz and whir of the modern age, the pomp and circumstance surrounding our modern interpretation of how a narrative should be structured, it's hidden a realization. Wait, 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 this person is both a cowboy and a lobster? This I gotta see! What are you building, cowboy lobster? Show me your secrets. Oh, well. This understanding comes as we look at the level of detail in a movie, game, or other piece of media that makes us amused, bemused, and amazed, yet uncaring beyond a general sense of hype and awe. Endgame is guilty of this, as is most of the Marvel and Disney stable of films and almost every big Broadway musical. There I am. There! Hey, now I can see what everyone has. Alright, so we got some Enchantress, some Axe. Ah, uh, Double Shadow Shaman, what's the other one? Ah, uh, Double Teeny Tiny. That's alright. They're not scrappy enough. You go. You see it. You think it could be practically the best thing ever. But then, after some time and consideration, Yeah, if I'm going scrappy inventor... Uh, so the thing is... Scrappy gives you regen and armor. So the extra health is nice. But then, after some time and consideration, you realize how many plot holes are in what you just watched. You see how flawed the narrative is, and all those shiny bits of detail that were so cool pick up a bit of tarnish. Inventor makes you explode, dealing damage equal to your hit points to... Well, maybe not your... I think it's like 30% of your hit points to everyone around you. So having extra hit points is nice. <laughs> Chicken! There's my hearts. I've got a heart on once you get there, once you understand all the beats of the, these moments, and your own criticism of media, you're ready to truly dig in to an old saying that gets a lot of hate. Less is more. So embarrassment of riches is uh, one additional item choice per uh, neutral round, which is nice. Fuck this ogre magi. Fuck him. It sounds dumb, and it sounds contradictory. But there's an art to guiding an audience's attention with the lack of one, some, or most of the bells and whistles usually attached to modern media. Okay, maybe Scrappy Knights? I don't know, there's not a lot of overlap with Scrappy Knights. Think about it. Alright, well, uh, Venomancer, that's lovely. Okay, I don't feel so bad about this. What? I feel bad about this. I feel bad about this! You know what, I'll take one damage, because, hey! That means I just get a free uh, roll for one hit point. Oh. One hit point for two goals sounds great! I'll take it. You can make stronger statements and build better stories. Bojack Horseman has a pair of excellent examples of this. Uh, Fish Out of Water is one of the funniest episodes of anything I've seen on television. It was season three of Bojack. And uh, the basic premise 
is that the titular horseman is attending an underwater film festival to promote his upcoming movie. Bojack, being Bojack, fucks it all up and hijinks ensue. Simple narrative, good setup for comedy. What pushes this episode over the top is almost the entire scenario plays out without dialogue. Uh, your two axes are no match for my one, my two star axe. <sighs> All right, cowboy lobster. Um, I gotta say, being both a cowboy and a lobster might not work. Just putting that out there. They want to consider something a vocation where your claws actually help. Oh, hey. Speaking of Scrappy. Without dialogue. A comedy without words. Without assailing me with one-liners and puns. I fucking love one-liners and puns beyond any imitation of sense. Believe me, I am shameless in my punning. It's still one of the funniest things I've ever seen. On the other hand, in the episode Free Churro, which is season 5, we spend 22 minutes with Bojack. There is one scene, one character talking, no interruptions, and no background. Yeah, suck a dick. That's a lot of signies. Wow, I'm never going to be able to cast, am I? Ah, uh, yeah. There we go background music as Bojack delivers his mother's eulogy. Bye, Carl. It is straight up a 22-minute monologue from one person that is only funny in parts. Ah, timber saw. Well, sir, I don't like it. It, like much of the show, is a masterclass in how to be both depressing and ridiculous, touching and absurd. And all these things are propelled most by everything the episode lacks. It forces you to focus on the words, it highlights the character's isolation and conflict emotions while still maintaining a defensive humor about it. It's both hard to watch and hard to stop watching. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm doing it. There we go. That's an advantage. And now we go boom. It's more than just in TVs and movies, though. Look at the art style of games like Enter the Gungeon, which we've played on this channel a number of times, or Undertale, which uh, I can always get... Uh, Neptune to rage about if I mention it. Hell, almost any pixel art game, including the grandparents of pixel art games that had to have that style to meet system requirements like Chrono Trigger or Seiken Densetsu 3, they're all utilizing similar restrictions and yet are so distinct in their individuality, I wouldn't even go as far as to say their art styles were the same despite them all being pixel art. Oh, wow, some people pushing six already. This goes double for chiptunes that make up each one of those soundtracks. They all use these limitations to really play with how much your mind interprets a collection of dots of beeps and boops and comes out more significant, more textured, and more memorable than most of their modern styled counterparts. Huh. I am probably not getting out of this one. Yeah. Figured I was taking a hit. Only two. Four. A lot of it's simple. Your brain is just very, very good at filling in the gaps. Hey, free reroll. Nice. Double puck. Oh, are you kidding me? There we go. And so long as the assumptions it makes to do that aren't contradicted, you remain more engaged with the piece as you have to constantly fill in those gaps and will do it in ways that you prefer the best. That's the key that becomes an invested audience. Uh, yeah. Despite anything else, the easiest way to get an audience going is give them something to fill in with their own creativity or something they can project on. Might have been too hard on Cowboy Lobster. All the way on the bottom. I'm sorry, friend Lobster. 
Wow, that's hardly a victory if I'm getting just level one everything. Garbage. Garbage. I mean, kill count on Axe is pretty okay. Oh, I'm not beating this very easily. Never mind, that's gonna die before I can cast that spell because everything's got a stun on it. Stuns, stuns, what a bunch of dicks. That's why so many games have silent protagonists. Tabula rasa to allow a player to just project themselves in the character's shoes. The thing is, when it's done well, it's more than just a cheap trick to get some easy engagement. In all of the above examples, they don't just leave out things to be painted over by the observer. Use what's missing to highlight, focus, or imply additional meaning. There's another reason for operating with such restrictions, though, and its breadth of appeal. Simply put, if your audience is projecting a great deal of their own creativity into your work, it will appeal strongly to a wider audience. That's not to say that... Oh man, I feel bad. It's like I'm kicking a puppy. That's not to say that, in general, it will have a wider appeal, but the audience that it appeals strongly to will be larger. You still have to overcome the fact that some people just don't want to fill in the gaps. Some people don't want to go through the effort of that. And that's fine. I mean, with any minimalist thing, you'll have people resistant to it just because it's kind of uncomfortable and it makes you work a little for it. That's life. A lot of people getting a lot of levels off of things. Knights, eh? This is the other reason why you have so many silent protagonists in pixel art and video games, because it just will have... Wow, chill out with these freebie stuns that you're getting out of nowhere. Bye. Ah. Uh huh. It's easier to find a larger audience that is enthusiastic. I think I should be catapulting quickly to top of Scrappy, but I don't have any tanker. I still need one of each of those and a sniper if I can. And once you have that, you'll get more people giving it a shot, and as more and more people lend their voice to how good your piece is, uh, more people are willing to push through that extra effort uh, to get there. That helm of indomitable will or whatever it is, it's such a pain in the ass. I can see why you're at 97 health still. It's not just having nothing but two stars. Although you probably only have one of those. Yeah, you definitely only have one of those druids as a two-star, but... Come on. So I'm glad you could complete your streak on the Cherish Cell. Hey, free reroll. Alright, not so bad. See? Not so bad. Well, this is a garbage shop that nobody wants. Oh wow, somebody got a three-star axe already. Started. Now I can buy this. My economy going a bit. So much murder. Wonder if I'll even beat these dudes. Yeah, no. That's annoying. Got really unlucky with them crits. There were a lot of them. Uh, the best example I can think of broadening your audience based on... No. Absolutely not. Blonkdoger. Oh well, yes, I'll take a Blonkdoger. Based on cutting things away or not using the tools of narrative is actually the Dota short film contest. Oh, people are already leveling to seven, that's so annoying. It may be a more pragmatic reason, but in the short film contest, it's widely known that if your short film has any spoken words, uh -huh, blink call, it will not do as well as those that do not. Bye. 
Bye, Felicia. This is puzzling at first if you're looking at it going, well, isn't it easier to just say? Oh, thank god. Suck it, witch doctor. Say what you're trying to say, but you need to realize Dota has a worldwide global fan base with particularly large groups of fans in Russia, China, Southeast Asia, as well as Europe and North and South America. To appeal, to appeal to all those different fans, what language do you use? The winning answer, judging by the film, uh, the short film contests this and previous years, is none. A short film that can communicate its story well without language will beat out even the most amazing film that speaks only one or two if you've got subtitles, simply because it is approachable by the entire audience rather than just a small subset. Uh, all that's left is your axe. That's not great. It seems very odd to just cut away what could be your entire set of dialogue to appeal to a wider audience, but in the end, you're able to reach more people and more people are able to understand. It's not saying that they can't understand something in a different language. I've watched many of things in a different language, some without subtitles, and gotten the gist of it. But when there's no language at all, there's an invitation there to everyone to sit back and enjoy. Whereas if it was in another language, you know contextually that it's meant for the people that understand that language. Even if you're ringing the meeting out yourself, it's a different experience and a different feeling. Wow, that... that freaking hurt. Oh, these jackasses with their freaking... But Oberon, you ask me? What the hell does this have to do with us? We're here for fun D&D videos, not this literary analysis chuff. Well, my friends, less is more applies to D&D as well. Hey, re re roll That's awesome. Not prepare less. Oh, geez, not prepare less. No, over prepare. Always over prepare until you. Oops. Oops. Well, that cost me a gold. That's alright. Only Mr. Jackpots is actually getting a full five, so I don't feel so bad. I'm not working that hard to keep up with the Joneses. Oh my goodness, how many fucking witch doctors do you have? Apparently too many. Mm. Oh, it's Cherish Cell. Of course I'm fighting the person who is top ranked amongst the list. Love that. I love that so much! Don't you see the smile on my face? I love it so fucking much. You know what? I'm screw it. I'm buying out. Not prepare less. Oh, geez, not prepare less. No, over prepare. Always over prepare until you're so over prepared that you don't ever have to prepare again. Then you're good. Uh, but exposit less. Don't shove your story down your players' throats. They won't care if you do. Uh, I don't know. I'll be fine. I'm not done. For this one, they get really nasty if they don't die at about the same time. But I'm good. I am smart. SMRT. Oh, he's so beefy. He is so beefy. Instead of reading a full description of a room they just walked in, give your players the at-a-glance version. Make them ask you. Make them explore it. Only go into fuller detail if they examine things. Instead of having your antagonist monologue at them, have the players discover scraps of journals after beating him if they're so inclined to search. If not, allow it to be thrown away. Okay. You can always come back to it later when they're up a crick and don't know what's going on. When they're confronted with a mystery, just put his calling card on it. There you go. Now they have to go and find information if they're so inclined. 
Or maybe they just write it off again and... and level 8 with two 3 stars. Eat a dick. Just choke on some smoldering cock. Yeah. Oh no, there's somebody from the bottom of the list and I just ripped them a new one. <laughs> I popped an Aegis on him. Damn. And yes, I know, it's pronounced Aegis. But Dota's fucking weird and they want to pronounce it Aegis, so whatever. You know what? If your group is going to write off something that you've built, they're going to write off something that you built. There is no amount of railroading that is going to make it. So the beauty of this is that gives my warriors 10 armor. This gives everyone 9 armor and 8 HP re regen. Why the fuck not? I'll keep Doom. Just a bit. I should be having a pretty okay time for the next few rounds at least. There's no amount of railroading that is going to make so many fucking witch doctors that a comfortable gameplay where they really feel engaged. You can always cludge and bludgeon them down your track, but in the end that doesn't engage players nearly as hard as if it's something that's based on something they've done. Ah, and he's facing... me. I'm sorry, friend, you're... you're fucking hosed. What you might rather do is actively resist inquiries into the deepest secret churnings of your plot. Here's the important part of that. Like... <laughs> just killing that timber saw took out, like, so much. Oh, <laughs> he's down to one hit point. Oh, I'm sorry. And here's the important part of that. Make sure the players know there's resistance. It's all crap. Don't really care. I'm gonna get second place. That's life. If there's one thing that gets players to do a bunch of stupid shit just to find out what's what the hell is going on, it's encountering resistance. He gave me a problem before. I don't think it'll be a problem this time. You really want them to go that way? Put a troll in front of it. You really want them to explore this, uh... This place? Put a gate up. You don't even have to imply that there's treasure there. Players are more likely to try and overcome your barriers than they are to try and follow the path you have set still have trauma from the Crystal Maiden meta with that freaking jerk that du duplicates himself, taking 40 or 50 damage in one turn. It's because he freaking copied himself so many fucking times, Shadow Clone, no Jutsu bullshit. Arc Warden, that's the douchemonger. That's basic. They, they meet doom. Have, the, have them come to the conclusions based on the shadow that your plot casts behind it, rather than force them along the railroad of what it's driving up to. Have them always chasing it. Don't be pushing them. Why do I always buy out for the creep round? What am I thinking? Oh. Hopefully this has a good impact. And if they ignore it, they ignore it. Use whatever your players are interested to link back in to link back to the plot. If they're <laughs> off trying to find a temple that's in someone's backstory, really, great. I want to get to level nine. I want to get to level ten as soon as I can, so I can get some tier five units because techies there in the top middle and the gyrocopter in the uh, the left side there at the bottom are five characters. Ooh, digging sounds great. Take that. I'll give that to somebody smart. 
Yeah, Tinker. Tinker with a Dagon, that's standard, right? If that takes three games worth of roleplay because they're really interested in the basic day-to-day -day runnings of the temple, well, now you've set up the, that whole basic so you can upend it. Okay. That's a level. That's a lot of problems. Bye. Time to, I don't know, siege the temple. Find a reason to interact with it. Come on. Ooh, that is a lot of damage. Okay. Apparently it's just nothing but creps. Yeah, fuck that bat rider. I mean, I still take a shot from the nature's profit, and it is a legitimate three-star nature's profit, so that sucks, but... Fuck that bat rider. Doomed him out of existence. New Doom is a good pick. And hey, free item reroll. Find the reason that what they're staring at, what they're interacting with, what they are building, is significant to the plot. Don't find a way to force them down the plot. It ends up feeling similar from a DM perspective, but from a player perspective... Oh, this might be a problem. Might not. It's a completely different animal. You'll hook your players every time because it'll feel like their actions and creativity have impact and are rewarded. That's of course because their actions and creativity will have impact and will lead to satisfaction and profit. Wow, that slark is a kick right in the dick. Can any of you get knock knocked out? Okay, thank goodness. Like, four of you fuckers that are at less than ten hit points need to die right the fuck now. Give them less of your script and they'll fill in the gaps for you. All you have to have is an idea of what's going on in your world. Kind of have a general end point in mind, maybe. Maybe. You're getting at the point where... Nine armor is not enough. Oh, Lymon's fucking hosed. Die. Suck a million dicks. You're out. Bye. And I hope Mr. Jackpot knocks out Carl Malone as well. Lime on. Alright. Better. Have a general end point in mind, and react to what they're doing. Force them to drive the bus. It'll save you aggravation, and it'll make them very engaged in what you're doing because they'll feel like anything they do has consequence and has that additional element of them to it. Don't be afraid to shake up the system for impact either. Oh my god, this fucking asshole. Fucking Slark. Like, no one's targeting him. Alright, I gotta switch this up. Maybe run Diceless and force your players to reach difficulty thresholds only through circumstance modifiers and good roleplay. Okay. Just forget what I was doing. That's fucking great. I've done that before. Especially when we're like, oh, we want to go to Denny's. And I go, alright, I'm not rolling dice at Denny's. I want to eat my eggs. So, uh... You guys are going to have to play better. Um, you can also restrict that based on plot things. Like, oh, maybe you're in a place where... Wow. They'd be doing like a thousand million damage to these things and they would still regen to full immediately. Ugh. Maybe you're in a place where fate is sealed. So no, you can't roll d20s. There is no random chance. There is only what will happen and what will not. Then the fun part of that gameplay is you give them a threshold. And then they have to find a way why their 17 gets to a 22 so that they can make it work. Sometimes it's working together. Sometimes the bard just has to play a different song. And sometimes they've got to really, like, take two or three rounds of action to set up a situation where they have enough advantages that they can actually get past it. And that's a reasonably fun way to run. But you know what's going to be distinct about that for your players? 
Remember that time we played without dice? Yeah, man, that was hard. Oh, this sucks. Guess I just get to lose. But it was really cool when I did all of these things and I knew they would succeed. Yeah, never mind. Suck it. Can't get worse than third now. You can suck my dick. If you really want to shake things up too. If there's an NPC in a scene that isn't supposed to be a barrier or antagonist, give them to one of the players whose characters isn't in the scene. All right, jackpots. Oh, there's this town guard here. He's really here to help you, uh, you know, find your way. You, play him. Why? Because you don't have anything to do right now because your character is somewhere else. Fine, now you're this guy. If they're played particularly memorably, remember that session the next time they show up to that town. Gather round, nerds! And pattern the guard's actions accordingly. Techie's doing the work. Make, make them be able to do more than just choose what their character does, but make them have impact on the narrative based on how they choose to play and all of the additional things around it. And yeah, I'm just going to be spending out every round because they are as well. And I want to get to 10, if I can. Here a show. I didn't do bad last time, so let's see how it goes this time. I mean, it's all luck. It is 100% luck. You won't end up with the full novel you may have been trying to write. But what you will end up is a better game and a more entertaining story with fully engaged players. I don't mean just more entertaining for the players. I mean, as you regale people of the tales of your D&D &D game, they're going to be more interesting, if only because you have five or six people collaborating. Uh, hey, free reroll. Free reroll. Nice. To create your story, rather than just you forcing your story down the player's throats. In the end, a light touch is all you need. Less is more. It's more room, it's more negative space for the players to work with. It's more invitation for uh, creative solutions, and it's more fun. Ooh, well, I might have. That bear is dead. Oh wow, that did fix some things. Ah! Oh. But I get nothing out of it. I came here at the end. That might have been dumb. Hey, alright, I bought out on the creep round again. Because I am smart. Super smart. S-M-R-T. Yeah! I love that these snipers just stop shooting as soon as they have an opportunity to not lose. That's so good. Alright, BKB or... Like... I have no regrets. No regrets. I'm one short, I don't even care. I should have locked it. I have regrets. I have so many regrets. I have all the regrets. Never mind, no regrets. None. No regrets. Woo! Somehow I'm on top now. How did that happen? Oh, wow. That, that is interesting. Oh, 
Oh, I'm about to lose a divine wraith here. Never mind. Yep. Oh. That's, uh, that's not, not great. Not great at all. It's pretty bad. Y'all. Pretty not good, bad. Oh, that's so not not good, bad. No lich either. Oh, good, he's dead. Jeez. <laughs> yes! Yes, I'm getting a rapier! Oh, I don't know how I did that. I don't know why I did that. Oh, that's so bad. Did I not get a rapier? Oh, he didn't equip it. Interesting. I thought I mean, what's? I've lost to Cherishell eight times. Definitely game over. Oh, that was a close one. Second place. Not bad. Well, if you hear what I hear, then you know. It's next time. I'm over on Neptune Beat Up the Planet. Something else. Thanks for sticking through my rage. Secrets, baby, we found out.